My name is Kent Jackson. I am the Director of Education at the Emerald Nicholson Conservancy. As many of you know, we share our pops with many birds, insects, and animals. Today, I would like to share information about our friend, the white-tailed deer. Historically, Massachusetts, deer populations were controlled by three main sources, indigenous people, mountain lions, and wolves. At one point, indigenous people, mountain lions, wolves, and deer shared the lands of Massachusetts. They lived in balance with each other in the land. Indigenous people respectfully harvested deer for food, clothing, and other necessary supplies, only taking as many as necessary. Mountain lions and wolves preyed on deer as well. Their actions naturally controlled the deer population. With the arrival of Europeans, Bounty systems were created to eradicate wolves and mountain lions from the area in order to keep sheep and cows safe. Over time, the eradication of these two predators, deer numbers were able to increase. As a result, deer have learned to adapt to living amongst humans. In many cases, humans have provided the perfect habitat. It is important that we keep our parks healthy and clean for humans and our white-tailed friends. Deer can be spotted in suburban and urban parks and green spaces. Let's take some time to learn about this interesting animal. One sign of the presence of deer are their tracks. White-tailed deer belong to the hooved family of animals. This fresh track in mud resembles a heart with a ridge in the middle. The top of the picture shows the direction of travel. This track shows as a splayed track. A track's appearance depends on the speed of the animal, the animal itself, and the ground, whether it be mud, snow, sand, etc. Direction of travel is toward the top of the picture. This track in moist gravel may be a little challenging to see. Look for the ridge in the middle of the track in the heart shape. Can you see the heart shape? Direction of travel is towards the top of the picture. This next track may be extremely challenging to see. The track is outlined with two sticks. Look in between the two sticks for the heart shape. White-tailed deer use trails or runs to get from one area to another, often from daytime bedding areas to food and water sources. They typically travel the path of least resistance. Depending upon the surface, some deer runs will be churned up, lumpy, and uneven. On open ground, you will be able to see the many tracks of passing deer. If the ground is covered by leaves, the tracks themselves will be obscured. Feel with your hands for the lumpy, uneven ground under the leaves. You can see this trail through grasses, leaves, and indentation made by the passing deer. You may not be able to see or feel tracks depending upon the surface. One way you can definitely determine if this trail is being used by deer is Eureka Scat. Deer scat will be varied from season to season depending upon what they are eating. Here you can see scat in pellet form. This picture shows scat that is bunched together in a large mass. Scat will take on this form when the deer are eating moist succulent foods in the spring in summer. This pile of scat is fresh. You can tell by the wet, shiny appearance. In a matter of days, scat loses its wet, shiny appearance as it weathers. Generally, after a month or two, plant fibers begin to show and the scat is lighter in color. Another sign that will indicate the presence of deer are deer beds. Deer beds are not always easy to see. Deer beds in soft ground and snow are much easier to see. Here you can see the outline of the deer's body on the ground. Just because a deer is bedded down does not mean it is unaware. Deer have an amazing sense of smell. The hearing is also finely tuned. Deer are able to tell the difference between animal and human footsteps. I happened to find a few hairs in this bed tell me that it was recently used. Deer choose locations to bed where they can pick up sounds and scents and where they can get 
protection from the weather. Another sign of deer are rubs. In the fall, look for fresh deer rubs. Bucks rub trees to mount the territory, work off aggression, and intimidate other bucks. A series of rubs made along a trail or field edge are called rub lines and provide clues about a buck's travel patterns. When a buck rubs a tree, it leaves behind scents from its forehead. Other deer often sniff rubs and sometimes rub the spot themselves before moving on. Even does rub their foreheads on a prominent rub to signal their presence. You can tell this rub is recent because of the moisture and the bright color of the bark. Box shavings on the ground also give an indication of a recent rub. White-tailed deer have been spotted in Franklin Park and the Arnold Arboretum. I invite you to explore these two wonderful emerald necklace parks to see if you can find signs of this amazingly adaptive animal. Find more videos like these, other activities, and more about the work of the Emerald Necklace Conservancy by visiting emeraldnecklace.org.